1979, the Arca Stars made the first of two visits this week to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Last year, Tim Steele dominated at this track, and Saturday night was on the outside pole, but by lap two, Steele was out of contention. And with his threat gone, the door was open to a field of confident hopefuls, including Gary Layton, Matt Hutter, Terry Tripp, and 45-year-old Mark Thompson of Cartersville, Georgia, who led the final 17 laps for his first career Arca win. On a beautiful evening in North Carolina, 40 drivers of the Automobile Racing Club of America are set to go super speedway racing at the mile and a half Charlotte Motor Speedway. Hi, welcome to Fox Sports live coverage of the Easy Care 200. I'm Alan Bestwick. In baseball, a doubleheader is a pretty common thing. A team goes to town, plays a series of two or three games over a few days. In stock car racing, that's extremely rare indeed. Two-time ARCA champion Bill Venturini works with me on the call of tonight's race. Bill, what's the significance of a racing doubleheader here in Charlotte? Oh, Charlotte Motor Speedway is becoming the premier stop on the ARCA cir circuit. Two big races, four days. These ARCA teams, drivers, get to showcase their talent in front of all of the Winston Cup car owners, sponsors, hundreds of thousands of fans. And anytime you can win a race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, no matter what division, it'll jumpstart your career. We talked just a moment ago about other drivers besides the defending champion Tim Steele getting a confidence boost Saturday. Is that a rightful confidence boost? Oh, no doubt about it. Saturday we saw that uh, Tim Steele is fallible. He broke. They, it showed that his car can break. He did get the car fixed, came back out, started to run with the leaders. He wasn't as dominant as everybody thought. So now everybody feels that maybe he can't, can be beat. We don't know if he was holding him back or not. We'll see in a little while. One of those drivers very confident about tonight's race is the man who ended up in victory lane on Saturday. Dr. Dick Bergren is with Mark Thompson. Well, Mark Thompson had towed to 56 ARCA races before last Saturday night. Always ran well, had six second place finishes. And then last Saturday night, he put it all together and won his first career ARCA race. Tonight, he's in the same car he had last Saturday night. He even has the same pit stall as last Saturday night and the same starting position. That's two in a row sound to you. Now, if we can, uh, yeah, if we can do two in a row, everything is the same. We still have the Air Force on the hood. We're real proud of that. I hope we finish in the same place that we finished Saturday night. What's the game plan? Run hard. Don't let anybody get by us. There you go. Steve Burns. Dick, Tim Steele loves this racetrack. He's the defending ARCA champion. At three races here last year, he won them all, but they had all kinds of problems. In the last race here, they seem to have that figured out. But, Tim, now you tell me the driver's having problems. Yeah, you know, I come down here from Michigan, you come down here where it's supposed to be the sunny south, and I end up getting the flu. I've probably been sick in four or five years now, and of all the times to get sick, you know, it's a... Uh, I think we'll be all right. Just going to save my energy till the end of the race. Are you well enough to win this race? Do you feel good enough once the adrenaline gets going? I'm sure once it starts, I'll feel fine. You know, I hope so anyways. It's just been a long couple days here, you know, and just we got to get things started. So maybe I'll get my mind off it. And maybe we can bring this HS die somewhere for Thunderbird home a winner here. I know how to get to victory lane here. I know you do, and a win's good medicine. Now, working with us on pit road, a lady who knows a lot about race cars. She drives them, Patty Moise. Thanks, Steve. We're standing here with Matt Hutter on the pole at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Pretty big deal. You had a great car last week, except for a little miscue in the pits. Could have won that race. What have you learned from last week to now so you can bring this home in, in the winter, sir? Uh, it's, uh, the main thing I learned is it's just, it's just as important to focus in the pits as it is on the on the racetrack you know whatever you're doing right at that time that's the most important thing and and whether it's out there or in here you got to get it done you've watched a lot of these races as a crewman are you ready to win we're ready uh the car's great the phoenix team's bad to the bone they put an excellent car underneath me james finch giving me a heck of an opportunity to drive his race cars and uh we're going to get it on tonight matt's dad ron hutter is one of the best engine builders in the business You'll be one to watch tonight. Alan? Hutter, Thompson, Steele, just three of the favorites in the field of 40 starters in the Easy Care Certified 200 ARCA Series Racing from Charlotte Motor Speedway, live on Fox. The starting lineup in the green flag when we come back. Stay with us. As the sun sets in Charlotte, North Carolina, we're closing in on the green flag at the Charlotte Motor Speedway of the ARCA Easy Care Certified 200. Let's go back to the grid and hear from one more of the favorites to win tonight's race. He is the ARCA Series point leader, but Dick Bergren, he's starting pretty well back in the field. 
Well, Frank Kimmel has been to the track four times in 1997, Allen. He has four top ten finishes. You're right. He is on top of the points. And Frank, this is only your second time here. This is a rough racetrack. What do you do? Charge to the front. Try to take care of the equipment. Keep all the wheels pointed straight. Well, definitely want to keep the wheels pointed straight, but the uh, Advanced Auto Parts Easy Care Chevrolet has run great all weekend. We've, uh, I've learned a lot that we've tried to get the car a lot better, so I think that uh, we might be able to get closer to the front tonight. Well, if he gets all the way to the front, it'll be his first ever Super Speedway win. Alan? Let's take a look at the starting lineup. The 40 cars in tonight's Easy Care Certified 200 at Charlotte. Young Matt Hunter on the pole. Gary Layton, local driver from Albemarle, North Carolina, outside row one. There's the defending champ of the series, Tim Steele, and Saturday's winner, Mark Thompson, in row two. Row three, young Jerry Nadeau, a Bush Series hopeful, and Perry Tripp, more on his story in a moment. ARCA championship contender Mark Gibson inside row four with NASCAR Goodies Dash Series contender Mike Swaim at an ARCA start. He's outside of row number four. Row five, the rookie of the year from this series a year ago, Blaze Alexander with NASCAR Winston Cup and NASCAR Bush Series regular Ed Barrier outside him. Young Kevin Ray, 19 years old, inside row six, along with Frank Kimball, we talked to a moment ago, the series championship leader. Row 7, veteran Bob Strait inside of series veteran Shane Doles in a Ford. Rick Eckert, the uh, Pennsylvania driver, inside row 8, along with 17-year-old Californian Jeff Streeter. He's outside row 8. Row 9, Alabama veteran Jimmy Kitchens, alongside Michigan's Rick Shepard. And at row 10, 95, co-rookie of the year for the ARCA Series, Dill Whittemore. And James Bolton making his first super speedway start in this event tonight. Row 11, Ohio's Kenny Martin and local driver Steve McClark. Mike Cicchetti, a local favorite as well, inside row 12, along with veteran Mark Stahl, finished fifth at Daytona earlier this year year. Sammy Potashnik's an instructor at the driving school that runs here at Charlotte. Kirk Shelmerdine, the veteran crew chief, formerly with the Richard Childress team, behind the wheel tonight. Josh Baltus is the son, the grandson actually, of Eldora Speedway promoter Earl Baltus, well known in the racing business. Tim Moser, that car carrying sponsorship from David Letterman's company in the event tonight. Rich Woodland's a NASCAR Winston West driver. Kurt Piercy, a veteran and a regular in the ARCA series, back in row 15. George's Russell Landrum making his first super speedway start in row 16, along with Ohio veteran Ed Curtis. Row 17, the Pennsylvania veteran Bobby Gerhardt behind the wheel again tonight after renting his car to someone else Saturday. And David Boggs from nearby Rock Hill, South Carolina, on the outside of that row. Tim Bolton is the late model stock car champion from Concord Speedway in row 18. Pennsylvania's Norm Benning on the outside of that row. And the last two rows on the grid, local driver Jack Ely on the inside, former modified racer Dan Partis with his third car of the week. Details on that later. And in the final row, in on provisionals, David Hall from the Kansas City area and Randy Roush from Cocoa Beach, Florida, bringing up the rear of the grid. 40 drivers set to go, 134 laps at the mile and a half. Charlotte Motor Speedway in the ARCA Easy Care 200. The green flag coming up next. Don't go away. Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway, the engines fired on the field of 40 starters in tonight's ARCA Easy Care Certified 200. Cars moving out onto the speedway now for the first of three pace laps before we cut them loose. The distance tonight, 200 miles, 134 laps for these ARCA Series cars. And as we look at the race analysis, Bill Venturini, the pit strategy will come into play during tonight's race. On, uh, uh, in contrast to Saturday, where it was a one-stop race, it'll be a lot different tonight. Oh, definitely. We're not sure if they're going to make three or four pit stops. Uh, the only way anyone could make two pit stops for this race would be if they happen to be fall, fall exactly at the right time. Uh, we will be having a mandatory caution uh, between lap, I guess it's 68 through 75, possibly. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. That's going to change some of the strategy because now you've got a yellow at the halfway point, so you could possibly do it in three laps and three pit stops. Yet that strategy in great part depending on where that mandatory caution falls will also be determined but you know you don't have to pit under that mandatory caution so the strategy right. will be played out by where the other cautions sure, fall. Sure, sure. It depends how the car is working. Let's go to Dick Bergwin in the pits. You're right Bill Venturini. Pit strategy will be extremely important. Look at this deal at Tim Steele's pit. They've mounted a dummy wheel here on the war wagon. Ted Heskin, one of the uh, wheel changers, tire changers, were just here doing practice going around the five lug nuts. It'll be at least, at least three pit stops and how fast they can get these wheels on and off again may well determine the winner of this race. 
pit crews and who makes up the pit crews are always a story in these ARCA series races, and we'll talk about that when we get set for the first series of pit stops. You look at the makes of cars in the field, you see the bow ties uh, pretty much have the upper hand as far as odds of winning this race are concerned. Yeah, and as you can see uh, that there's actually two Osmobiles in the ARCA field. That's because the ARCA cars, uh, the years that they're allowed to compete go back a little further than the Winston Cup cars do, so you're allowed five years on an on, uh, on available car to run. Saturday night when we went to get the green flag for the ARCA race here, it didn't go too well. Here's the field coming down, and you see back in the pack, they've already got contact before they even got to the start-finish line, made a pretty big mess out of the start of the race. And it was really hard to tell exactly what had happened. Uh, we're not sure if it looked like some of the guys were getting a little antsy coming off of four and, and uh, doing a little bumping and moving around, and I think it got everybody upset just before they came down to get the green flag. And when they did drop the green flag, the lead cars were a little hesitant. The guys in the back saw the green flag, I think, a little sooner, jumped on the throttle, and then we had a big mess. So from that Saturday night, as we're about a lap away from the start here, what have the drivers learned to avoid <laughs> something like that happening again? Well, I'm sure they're going to be a lot more calmer on the restart. Uh, everyone's going to be listening to their spotters. They're not going to just jump. They're going to, uh, you got to listen to your spotters when they see the green flag go, and they're going to watch the cars in front of them. You, you can't run into the guy in front of it. You can't pass before you get to the start-finish line. So they've got to be a lot more cautious than I think everybody will. And this is a much longer race than it was on Saturday evening, so it's even more important to get to the finish. Here are the championship standings in the Arca Bond Omar Hyde Series. After four events of their season, you see Frank Kimball there with a 90-point lead on Bob Strait. And Saturday night's winner, Mark Thompson, moving up a pretty good bit in the standings to third. Tim Steele dropping from third back to fifth in the standings. Steele was running the NASCAR Bush Series for several races earlier this year, but and then that might lead you to the perception that maybe he missed some of these races, but actually, he's been here every week. No, he he's, hasn't missed an ARCA race yet. He ran uh, real good at Salem at a last short track race that they ran at. Uh, but as you can see, you, you drop out of one race and you have a problem, and, it, and you lose your points. About a half a lap away from the start, there is David Boggs' machine on pit road with the hood up on that car, the Rock Hill, South Carolina driver who was scheduled to take the uh, green flag back in 34th position. So something amiss there on Boggs' machine, and he will need to get that car repaired and get on the racetrack for waving with the green flag, or he is going to be having a bad, bad night and way behind before we even get going. Field up in between turns three and four, set to go. 200 miles, the 134 laps distance this evening in the ARCA Easy Care Certified 200. Young Matt Hutter, son of legendary engine builder Ron Hutter out of Ohio, leading the field down to the start for the first time in his career. Here they come, getting ready to go to the green flag. in contrast to what we just showed you from Saturday night. Quickly, Hunter moves out front of the lead. The front three or four now, sorting out single file quickly as they hit the back stretch for the first time. Yeah, you can see that the first three cars have already kind of uh, got nose to tail, which is good if they want to pull away from the rest of the pack. Uh, if they can stay in line, it definitely will help if they're not running side by side. Front three, single file off of four, and Tim Steele quickly to second spot. That's Jerry Nadeau in the 0-1 behind him as the field begins to sort itself out off of turn number four and work its way into turns one and two. There you see Hutter, Steele, and Nadeau in the 1, the 16, and the 0-1 respectively. Those are the front three cars. You can see we've had a real nice, clean, safe start. Uh, a lot of the drivers have actually got into single file uh, racing so that they're not going to have run into any problems where they're running side by side right now. Everybody, I think, is just feeling it out. After Saturday's big wreck at the beginning of the race, everyone's kind of settling down. Two laps complete, the front three, with about a seven or eight car length lead on fourth place as they work their way down the back straightaway. Matt Hunter with Tim Owen. Oh, there's a car in trouble as we uh, see the caution lights come on. That's Tim Moser in turn number two. The car sliding down the racetrack almost gets clipped, barely gets away, and Moser has brought out the caution for the first time in the race as the field comes by to complete lap number four. Looked like somebody just clipped his nose when he got down into the grass. That's Tim Moser, the road racing instructor from San Jose, California. That's the car carrying sponsorship from David Letterman. 
Letterman's company is called Worldwide Pants Incorporated. He uh, got together with Moser. Uh, they were friends through some of Letterman's uh, road race driving school exploits and uh, sponsored Moser down at Daytona for the season opening race for this ARCA series. And here they are back again in Charlotte. Ran here on uh, Saturday night in the event and finished in the 18th position, but things not going quite as well this evening. Let's get another look at what happened. Moser sideways and headed up the banking toward the outside wall. Yeah, you, you can see that he uh, got loose going in the middle of a one and two. Car broke around on him. And as he starts to slide down the banking here, I don't know if they're going to continue. No, they're not. You can see that now. You can see on the left front headlight uh, that he, he, he was clipped. I don't know if he was clipped by the uh, 42 car of Dan Pardis or not. But just as he came off the banking, slid into the grass, he just got nipped. Let's go to Pit Road and Dick Bergeron. Well, interestingly enough, this Tim Moser has very little stock car experience. In fact, his first ever stock car race, believe it or not, was in Daytona earlier this year. And this coming weekend, he's going to head off to Lime Rock where he'll race a Porsche. That's what he's more accustomed to. And next weekend, he'll really be at home at Watkins Glen when he's in a formula car. That's the stuff he likes a lot, but he'd like also to make a career in stock cars. This isn't going to help very much, though. Unfortunately, a tough lesson for Tim Moser and David Boggs back on pit road as well. Under caution for the first time in the early going of the ARCA Easy Care 200 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Back in a minute. Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway, live coverage of the ARCA Von Omar Hyde Series in the Easy Care Certified 200 on Fox. Under caution for the first time when Tim Moser spun in turn two down to pit road and Dr. Dick Bergeron. Well, as darkness falls on Charlotte Motor Speedway, we just take a look over there at the backstretch and look what's coming up. It's a full moon. There's a reason that they call lunacy and lunatics what they call them, because things really get crazy when the moon is out and full. We got it tonight. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good sign or not. We may see some wild action, but uh, I tell you, yellow fever sometimes breaks out, too. As a race car driver, you hate to see that. <laughs> That's Josh Baltus back on the racetrack. He came down pit road a moment ago. Baltus is uh, the young 22-year-old grandson of Earl Baltus, the owner of the famed Eldora Speedway in Ohio, and he's had kind of a tough week here uh, in Charlotte. Yeah, Saturday he got involved in that first lap wreck and uh, actually tore the whole side of the car off. Sunday, seeing my shop's only about two miles away from the speedway, his crew chief uh, and me are friends, brought the car over to my shop, and we put a whole new side on that car for him. He was on pit road just a moment ago. Back on the racetrack now, showing in 20th place. Back to pit road and Steve Burns. Well, Alan, a minute ago, Dick Bergman talked about how the moon is starting to rise. That means it's getting cooler down here. I talked to Frank Kimmel's crew, Frank in the number 46, the points leader. They said they practiced last night and they practiced as it got cooler. They ran on scuff or used tires while most people were on new tires and they got faster. They also changed both axles, so keep an eye on that 46. Let's talk about weather conditions and their effect on a race car. This racetrack has a reputation for its condition changing more as the temperature goes up and down. They don't change the pavement as the weather cools off. What does it mean when the, when the track changes? Oh, definitely. This is one of the worst tracks that we race on for changing according to the weather. When the sun's out, this track is really loose. Uh, we call it greasy. That's when the back end of the car wants to actually come around before the front end. When the sun goes down, it gets cooler. It gets real tight. The car starts to push. You come off the corner. You turn the wheel to the left. The car gets, it feels really heavy in the steering wheel because the car is actually starting to plow, push towards the wall, the front end. Let's take another look at what happened to bring out this caution a couple of laps ago. Tim Moser in the 92 there over in turns one and two. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering if maybe him and uh, Josh Baltus might have got together to cause that uh, w because I noticed the whole left side of Josh Baltus' car is actually all wrinkled again. And uh, he came in right after the next uh, lap for the caution. So he must have been involved with it. Looking at the uh, replay, it might have been... Norm Benning's Norm car Benning, that just, that clipped got, uh, just a touch of the nose of that machine. Field now, by the way, on one to go. We'll go back uh, to racing next time by. On pit road is Perry Tripp. Let's get out and get an update with Patty Moise. Perry's had a kind of a tough week here at Charlotte. Oh, he's had a tough two weeks. When we were here testing a couple weeks ago, he backed that car into the wall, had to put a new clip on it, a whole new body. Came out here, ran the race. Uh, Saturday, then again yesterday after qualifying in practice, he again wrecked, crashed the car, took it back, uh, back home, worked on it, 
got back in time to get it fixed for the race. And didn't get here all that long before <laughs> the race, just in time to really roll through tech inspection and get it on the grid and go. So it's been a tough break, a tough week for Perry Tripp, who comes into this event 11th in the Archibald Omar Hyde Series Championship standings. Bob set to go back racing now. The caution waving earlier at lap number three. We'll get the restart at lap number eight. It is Matt Hutter on the point driving the Phoenix construction entry, the James Finch team that has had so much success in ARCA Series competition over the years with drivers like Andy Hillenberg and Jeff Purvis, most notably. And we're back under green now, and Tim Steele's not going to waste any time trying to get the lead away. Uh, you can see Tim's actually looking on the outside. That's a pretty gutsy move. Steele going to try the high line off of turn number two. And as they head down the backstretch, Hutter with that power by his dad able to stay alongside. And not giving any ground to the veteran either. i got to give him credit. He didn't get rattled at all. He showed uh, Tim Steele that he's ready to race with him. Okay, like I said, Saturday showed, proved a lot to these guys here that Tim Steele is beatable if you, if you play your cards right. Great stuff here. Matt Hutter on the inside, Tim Steele on the outside. That's Jerry Nadeau in that 0-1 looking to get up and make it a three-way dice for the lead. Yeah, he's just kind of sitting waiting to see which car will uh, actually make the move. And it's really hard to say. Uh, Tim's got, it looks like Tim Steele's got a little more. Oh, we've got oh, oh, trouble. trouble. Hutter slips up the racetrack. Flip Steele, big trouble. Here comes the pack in turn four. Oh, what a great job everybody's done. All of those drivers, and I spoke too soon. Kevin Ray gets together with Shane Doles. Mark Gibson's into Tim Steele as they come through the tri-oval. Three or four cars spinning around. That could have been a whole lot worse than it was. A lot of drivers doing a good piece of work to keep from getting into that all the way through turns three and four. Yeah, you, you, I, I'm, I'm really amazed that, you know, the first two cars spin in front of a pack of 40 cars, and uh, they actually did a pretty good job. You can see Tim Steele's car is really hurt. Uh, that's a shot of Shane Doles' car. He's stuck here in the infield. Tough break for uh, Tim Steele and Shane Doles. Second caution of the race is out at lap number 10. Let's take another look at what happened. They're racing for the lead. All right, you could, uh, you could, what happened was as Tim Steele pulled around on the outside of Matt Hutter, right in the center of the corner, that's what takes the air off of the spoiler of the inside car. And I don't think Matt Hutter, you know, being a young, a young driver, didn't realize it was going to happen. And when you're sitting there and you know a faster guy's on the outside, you almost got to play for, play for that. You got to expect that, that when he does come, come alongside you and pass you, he's going to take the air off and make the car loose. Let's get out of the pit. Steve Burns is looking at Matt Hutter's car. And, uh, Alan, the rest of the crew is looking over the car. The left side is completely flattened. The left rear wheel is flat, sheet metal hanging over it. And they're not really moving too quickly. I'm not sure there's a whole lot they can do. They've shut the motor off. Crew chief Johnny Allen is talking to Matt, but again, I don't. There's not a whole lot they can do to this car. The left side is completely flattened. We also saw Mark Gibson in the 59 enter the pits and take back off, and he had severe damage to the left front. Let's go back upstairs, Allen. Well, we heard Tim Steele wasn't feeling too good at the start of the evening. He's not feeling any better right now. The defending ARCA Series champion, apparently going to be out of the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte early. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go away. Back at Charlotte Motor Speedway, you see the car of defending ARCA Series champion Tim Steele being hooked up for uh, a tow back to the garage after being involved in an accident while racing for the lead at lap 10. Let's go to the garage and Patty Moise. Well, we're here with Tim Steele. Really a tough break after, you know, two races in a row like this early on. Give us your perspective on it. I don't know. On the outside, next thing I know, I'm turning around. You know, I know I was up pretty high and he had plenty of room. That's... It's a shame, you know, it's just, it hasn't been a week. I broke a hub and I got the flu now and and then stupidity. I don't know, you know, it's it's a shame, you know. It's, hate it for our sponsors, HSI and Sim Lake, you know, or I think we had a car that we could have won this race with, but not going to win it the way it is right now. Be back at him next time. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back. It's oh, yeah. just... You know, it's just a shame, but, you know, that's, that's the way things go. You know, sometimes you're lucky and sometimes stuff like this happens. I don't I don't understand it completely, I guess. Maybe something happened that I didn't see, but, you know, I thought he had plenty of room. Now to Steve with Matt Hutter. Matt, your view of what happened tonight. It's another tough night for you. Uh, you know, just 
side by side racing with Tim there, and the car just got away from me. I I feel terrible for for the Phoenix team and for Tim and for anybody else who got caught up in that deal because uh, you know just uh, you know the car just just got loose and got away. Are you all right? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Well, it's a tough lesson for uh, Thad Hutter, two races in a row here in the ARCA Series. You know, Tim Steele made a comment that he thought it was a little stupidity. I, I think it was just a little more inexperience. Um, you know, Matt Hutter has been just racing for two years, hasn't had a whole lot of experience on the speedways. And unfortunately, there's no school about this. The only way you learn what happens is when this happens to you. You're out there, you're racing, you're racing side by side, somebody takes the air off the car. That's when you finally know what it feels like to lose the air off of your spoiler. Unfortunately, you wreck. Watch the front end of Hutter's car here, which is really the first thing that kind of takes off on him. I is it the front end that's taken off first, or is the back end going first? Well, as you can see, the, he actually had to, had to turn yep. the wheel back to the right yep. because the back end started to come around. Then what happened is the minute he turned the wheel to the right and the back end grab, the front end grab, it turned him right up into Tim Steele. There's actually nothing he could do. He needed to be a little more prepared as Tim came around him. But uh, nothing, I mean, uh, I feel sorry for both guys. I've been in that situation. Amazing what air can do at 180 miles an hour. There you see, now this, this is the aftermath when we thought everybody had gotten away okay, but Tim Steele's car is kind of right in the middle of the dogleg here in the front stretch. Oh, you can see Kevin Ray actually had missed the wreck, and it looks like Shane Doles came in, got on the brakes, got the car a little sideways, and then ran into the back of uh, Kevin Ray. Shane in that 97, and right on the far right of the picture there, that's Mark Gibson in the 59. Here's another look there, and that's oh. the second hit to uh, Tim Steele, and, and the and third, third hit. hit. And now you'll see him come back across the racetrack again. Just miss. Well, that was Jerry Eckert, I think, and um, uh, Rick Eckert. Yeah. And then hits the wall with the, with the front end. Bad break for uh, Tim Steele, Matt Hunter. Bad break for everybody involved. Unfortunately, several cars in this accident that has put us under caution for the second time at lap number 10. Back to pit road and Dick Bergeron. A good crew chief could do a whole lot more than turn wrenches and set up a race car. David Ift, who is crew chief for Gary Layton, is one of the very best. He just radioed his driver and said, Gary, two of the best cars are out already. Be careful. Layton has been very fast here. He won the pole here on Saturday night, finished third. He started second tonight, and he's got his fingers crossed. He could well win this thing if all goes well. Yeah, they just showed a, that little crafty crew chief of uh, David Ift, and I know <laughs> what he's thinking because he, uh, he worked for me back when I won in 1991 at Texas World Speedway, and I know what he's thinking. Under caution for the second time in the ARCA Easy Care 200 at Charlotte, the favorite to win the race, Tim Steele, sidelined again early. Live coverage of the Easy Care Certified 200 for the ARCA Bond Omar Hyde Series from Charlotte Motor Speedway on Fox. Under caution for the second time in the race, Matt Hutter and Tim Steele crash racing side by side for the lead they are back in the garage others damaged in that caution flag in that accident steve burns has got an update on one of the championship contenders who's been nicked yeah alan rough night for mark gibson he started tonight seventh but take a look this is the entire front nose of his thunderbird they've had the tin snips out here they put away the entire front nose uh right right front quarter panel left front quarter panel they're furiously cutting sheet metal away so it's going to be a rough finish for Mark Gibson. Let's go to Patty Moise. I'm here beside one of the tires that came off the 18 car. It was one of the cars involved in this altercation. Another car hit it. You can see here how the inner liner has held up, even though the outside of the tire has shredded and come apart. They've uh, come in for repairs, and they're still out there on the racetrack. It's back up to uh, an update on Mark Gibson. Steve Burns showing us that nose piece, the air dam. We've heard so much about that uh, in aerodynamic terms over the last couple of years, particularly in NASCAR racing. As we look at Mark's car there, what's it going to be like for him to try and get some speed out of that machine without that nose piece? Oh, he's going to have his hands full. First of all, the car's not going to, it's not going to handle. It's not going to go into corners the same way it has for the last week. Uh, the air rushing under the hood actually is going to uh, make a lot of noise inside the engine compartment. Uh, it, he'll feel the air. It definitely is not going to handle the same. Uh, he probably will run 15 to 20 miles an hour slower at least. And he's also got to be concerned about just the force of the air and even just 100 miles an hour ripping more of that sheet metal open and causing him some further problems. Uh, that, that could 
compound things for the driver who's fourth in the ARCA championship standings coming into this event. And that's a bad break for Mark. Sure, and now if any debris gets picked up on, uh, kicked up on the racetrack, it's going to go through the radiator. There's no grill there to block it, no front nose to deflect it at all. So anything that he, anyone in front of him kicks up is going to go through the radiator and then he's going to have motor problems. Lights are off on the pace car. We will go back racing in one more lap. Just joining us, we are under the second caution of the race already at lap 18. First caution at lap number three, when Tim Moser got turned around into the wall in turn two. The second caution, the big story of the race so far, came out just a short while ago at lap 10, when the two leaders got together. Uh, Matt Hutter slipping up the racetrack, hitting Tim Steele, and they crashed into the wall in turn number four. Well, like we had said at the beginning of the program, at the opening, uh, Tim Steele was fallible. And again, it showed again today uh, there's two good cars that are out of the race now, so the confidence level again of Mark Thompson and, and Gary Layton and Jerry Nadeau and Ed Barrier are, are, is really high. And these guys feel now that they're unbeatable. They're, they're going to be racing against each other, and now you've got uh, uh, Mike Swaim, who's driving the Barry Owens car and, and plays Alexander. Frank Kimmel's running seventh. Here's a guy that was hoping to get up front. Now the two top guys that we, fe we felt were the strongest here are gone. So now everybody feels that they have a shot of winning tonight. Jerry Nadeau, the race leader, after the two front runners crashed themselves out of the race a little while ago. Now Gary Layton is up to second. Mark Thompson is third. Ed Barrier fourth. And Mike Swain Jr. is fifth. Pace cars off the speedway. Green flags in the air. break Jerry Nadeau Gary Layton and Mark Thompson give us a little three car breakaway a couple of car lengths of track separating them now as the field springs out just a little bit off the single file restart onto the back stretch oh yeah they, you know the top four cars right now are definitely guys that have talked about having the opportunity of winning uh, knowing that now there are the four cars or five cars that are capable of winning this race uh, pit stops are now good pit stop strategy is going to play a big part in this race now because there's no dominant cars i feel that there's five or six cars that can run side by side equal to each other looks like we got uh we've got a car kevin ray that was just smoking a little that had to be from uh involved in the wreck he must have a fender rubbing on a tire Kevin Ray is on the racetrack, but he is running in 31st position and well back in the field. Jerry Nadeau, the race leader originally from Connecticut, now makes his home just outside of Charlotte in Denver, North Carolina. And this is a Richard Jackson Jack team car. Yeah, that, that, this is a Winston Cup team. Uh, I think it's an experimental car. They're running the, the new, uh, I think it's the SB2 Chevrolet motor. We're finding out that there are a few teams in, in, this, in this ARCA race that are doing some testing for the Winston Cup teams. And Jerry Nadeau is one of them. Got a good look at Gary Layton in that bright orange car, the second place driver. Layton is from Albemarle, North Carolina, just down the road a little bit from the Speedway. 34 years old and a many-time winner at the Concord Motor Speedway. There's Kevin Ray we talked about a minute ago, the 19-year-old bringing his car down pit road. That machine looking an awful lot like a Richard Petty machine and with good reason. Yeah, Kevin's one of the instructors at the Richard Petty Driving School and. Uh, I, the smoke I saw coming off the corner, I'm not so sure it was a tire because he wouldn't be, unless, it, unless he's got a tire that's cut. Another car smoking pretty heavily back in the pack. That would be the Tim Bolton machine. Bolton, a Concord, North Carolina driver who is the late model sportsman champ from Concord Speedway. It's his first Arca start and things not going too well for him. Down to Dick Bergeron, who's watching Kevin Ray's pit stop. Now they're trying to pound the fender out from this thing. The fender is definitely in the tire. The exhaust system is bent. The sheet metal hanging down. The left side of Kevin Ray's car is very significantly damaged. They put it down, thought they were going to get him back going again. They've changed their minds. They're going to work some more. He's already down one lap. By the time this gets done, he's liable to be down more than that. Continuing to watch Tim Bolton in the 06 with some smoke from his machine. I was just going to say, how much longer does he want to stay out there with it like that when he pulls down to the bottom of the backstretch? Back up closer to the front now, working uh, with Jimmy Kitchens in the 47, facing a little challenge for the ninth position from Rick Eckert in the double zero, the orange car there in turn one. That's Ken Martin in the 75, the Ohio short track driver, trying to get involved in this mix up. Again, this for the ninth position. Yeah, that 75 car, that's a Bob Shack car, one of the uh, veteran ARCA competitors that I've raced many, many nights with. 
Jimmy Kitchens uh, from the Alabama gang. He's from Hueytown, Alabama. Grew up with Davey Allison, racing with Davey on the short tracks around Alabama, Birmingham, Montgomery, and the like. And is hoping to try and make a name for himself. Uh, ran some NASCAR Bush Series events last year. Didn't have a lot of luck. And is hoping to find himself some, uh, some good fortune here by getting a few starts in the ARCA Series. Cautions on the Speedway. Believe we had a car drop an engine on the racetrack. It was uh, uh, one car in turn four dropping debris. We understand now the reason for the caution. So the yellow flag for the third time in the event at lap 26 by debris in turn number four. At the head of the leaderboard, Jerry Nadeau, Gary Layton, and Mark Thompson in the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte. Charlotte Motor Speedway, always a magnificent sight, lit up under the lights at night, looking down on the racetrack from the Brute Blimp, the best-smelling blimp on the planet. And uh, as you look back up on the Brute Blimp, as it circles overhead on an absolutely gorgeous night in the Carolinas, the fans here in the grandstands getting a wonderful treat. T-shirt weather to be out watching Jerry Nadeau lead the ARCA Easy Care 200. To Pit Road and Steve Burns. Alan, Jerry Nadeau is driving quite a race car you mentioned, that it's a Richard Jackson Precision Products car. Morgan Shepard drove this very same car at Bristol this past April, and the chassis is the same chassis that Rick Mast placed on the pole for the first ever Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway in August 1994 to Dick Bergren. Well, the fans here at Charlotte Motor Speedway are being treated to a somewhat different view of the stock car races. Generally, if you come to an auto race, you see pretty much the racetrack, what's in front of you. Humpy Wheeler has brought in four huge Astraton screens. You can see one of these screens from any seat in the house, and they've been playing the same broadcast you folks at home have been watching. So they can see the replays just like you can. Back to the booth. As we come back, here's Mark Gibson coming down pit road once again. We've documented his problems under the last caution, missing that front air dam from his machine and the troubles that's going to cause and maybe getting up to speed for a couple laps has shaken a few more things loose on that car. Also, uh, Ed Curtis is on pit road in that 73 machine. Ed from Brook Park, Ohio, is uh, not had a whole lot of success here tonight. This is the third or fourth time he's been on pit road with the hood up on that car. And another return visitor to pit road, Kevin, Kevin Ray, Ray, trying to get some more things straightened out on that car. I think they're going to just try to beat that fender out a little better so that it makes sure they don't have any fender rub on that one. You know, I always find it interesting. They spend so much time making aerodynamic adjustments on the bodies of these cars before they come. Then they'll take a big old sledgehammer and just beat the fender out to get it away from the tire. And so much for the aerodynamics. Under caution for the third time in the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We'll take a break, come back for the restart. About set for the restart in the ARCA Easy Care 200 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Caution for debris at lap 26. Now as the field comes down to complete lap number 30, we will get the green flag. The car on the inside of the race leader is Mark Gibson. Mark running fairly well back in the field in 32nd position, a lap down. And you see Doyle Ford atop the starter stand unfurling the green flag. We're back to racing. Jerry Nadeau, Gary Layton, and Saturday night's race winner Mark Thompson break away on the restart. Again, at every restart we've had so far, it looks like we get a three-car breakaway at the beginning. Uh, but right now, it looks like uh, Ed Barrier in the number 90 car has been able to kind of hang on. There's an interesting story about what happened with Ed Barrier yesterday here, too. We'll talk about Ed in just a moment as we look at the rundown of the field as they stand out just after the restart in the Easy Care 200. Up front, Jerry Nadeau in the white car, Gary Layton in the orange car, and again, Mark Thompson in that black car. He's running third at the moment after his first ARCA Series win Saturday night. Watching uh, off the break on the restart, we've seen several times the lead three cars be able to just get away They've been pretty much, aside of the early part of the race where Matt Hutter and Tim Steele were side by side, the leaders have pretty much stayed single file, and that's not helping any of these guys we're looking at here, like Bob Strait and Rick Eckert, try and catch up as they race side by side. No, when you're trying to catch to catch the leaders, you hope everyone's running side by side, you know, two or three wide and six deep so that you can close up on them. Watching the race for sixth position, the 26 is Blaze Alexander, the rookie of the year for this series a year ago, and the 46 is the current championship point leader for ARCA. Frank Kimmel, that's Larry Clevin's machine, a car that's had much success on this circuit over the years. Well, you can see Frank's uh, definitely improved from where he was running on Saturday. And like he said earlier, uh, they had done some testing late at night with some scuffed tires, and it's showing because he's definitely running a, smooth, a real smooth line, and he's been able to kind of close up on the leaders. 
Frank's the only ARCA Series driver who's finished in the top ten in every race thus far this season. Sixth at Daytona, fourth in Atlanta, third at Salem, and seventh here Saturday night. Blaze, on the other hand, has had just the opposite luck thus far this season. He really has not posted any kind of results at all, especially for a driver who finished fifth in the championship a year ago. His run so far this season in the first four races, 37th, 17th, 22nd, and 39th. And he'd like to get a good finish tonight to kind of turn that around. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Blaze is a good competitor, has good equipment, always seems to run up front. But like you said, finishing in the top ten for Frank Kimmel. That's why he's the points leader right now. Watching Alexander and Kimmel race for the sixth and seventh positions. Up front, things getting a little bit closer now. Several laps after the restart between Nadeau in the 01 and Gary Layton in the 74. Boy, you could, you could see that both cars are taking two distinctly different lines. One car goes in high, one car goes in low. And in the center, they actually switch lines. You can see right now, Gary Layton's trying to put a move on the outside of Jerry Nadeau going into one. Looks up top as he goes into the corner and will squeeze out in front of Nadeau as they come off of turn number two. And Gary Layton will become the third different leader of the race. To Pit Road and Dick Berger. I wouldn't worry too much about Gary Nadeau just getting past right there. Jerry Nadeau just getting past right there. He is one of the most experienced drivers in the field today. He has run modified dirt cars. Last year, he spent the year in Europe where he hung out at places like Nürburgring, Donington, Silverstone. He's run Formula Ford, Skip Barber, Endurance, and Parts. Now he wants to turn his attention to big league stock car racing. He's one of the smartest, craftiest, and most experienced young drivers out here. Keep an eye on that 01. He's not done. Right now falling back to second behind Gary Layton. Let's talk about that line just a minute ago. As we were watching Layton trail Nadeau, Layton went way wide into three. Was he experimenting to see if his car would stick up top and, and get a little more speed there? Oh, I, I wouldn't say that he was experimenting. That sometimes you just got to let the car roll where it wants to go in the corner. You don't want to, if, if the car wants to push up just a little, you don't want to pinch it down, turn it down to keep it in a low groove because it actually scrubs off speed. If the car wants to roll up a half a lane, you let it roll up. Uh, you know, you don't let it roll two lanes out because then you've got a problem. But uh, I think they're just feeling their cars out. They've got it. They've got 37 laps on the tires right now. Cars are starting to slip and slide a little. The fuel's getting low on the cars, so now it's making the car a little more loose. So they're, they're feeling the cars on something that they don't usually feel when you're out there practicing. This machine that Gary Layton is driving, the machine they got from the Morgan McClure team. Here's the race for the 11th position. The three is Kirk Shelverdine, the former crew chief for Dale Earnhardt and the Richard Childress racing team. And outside of him is Dill Whittemore in the 56, the co-rookie of the year in the ARCA series in 1995. Yeah, Kirk Shelverdine, uh, he was a second round fast qualifier yesterday. That's because he wasn't here for the first round qualifying. Uh, I think he posted like the fourth fastest speed overall out of anybody. Real quick car, uh, definitely moving up to the front right now. Kirk's had a lot of engine troubles over the four or five days he has spent here uh, in Charlotte. Fell out of the race Saturday night very early with an engine problem and is hoping things go much better his way tonight. Right now, moving up from his starting position of 26th, Shelmerdine into the 11th spot, so he's advancing a little farther toward the front. And right behind Dill Whittemore in the 56 is Ohio driver Ken Martin, going to try and challenge him for what would be the 12th position. Yeah, and you can see how, how slow we were talking earlier about Mar uh, Mark Gibson being able to not be able to keep up the speed. They went around him like he was a, a, a slow car, which he was, but they went by him really quick. Back to that race for sixth position between Blaze Alexander and Frank Kimmel still going at it about a car length apart. Kimmel hasn't been able to move up and get by him, but he isn't losing any ground either. No, I, I think right now Frank is kind of just holding his own. It almost looks like he's getting into the corner just a little better than Blaze. As a matter of fact, he's trying to put a move on him right now. Off turn four, they come. This is the race for the sixth position as Frank Kimmel tries to get underneath Blaze Alexander at the start-finish line. To Pit Road and Patty Moise. I was talking to one of the crew guys Alexander fighting a little bit of a loose condition there and costing him a spot. As you can see, when they went into the corner, Blaze let the car kind of roll up the banking a little more. Uh, that's because the car was loose, and he felt if he tried to pinch it down, that he'd actually spin the car up. 
Shelmerdine on the move, trying to gain a couple of spots. He goes around, looks like Bob Strait's yeah, machine. That, that would be for the eighth top. position. So he's gone from 11th to 8th in just a couple of laps now, and Shelmerdine really got a fast car, and he's on the march. Yeah, I think Kirk now feels really comfortable with the car. The field's kind of spread out. The uh, beginning race jitters are gone from everybody, and now he, he can just drive the car the way he wants. Shelmerty moving up from 26 starting position. He's about 11 seconds behind the race leaders right now, so he's got some distance to make up before he can get up and challenge late, and they do here. Yeah, but, you know, 11 seconds when you're running a track this big, uh, not, not too much to worry about right now. The third-place car of Ed Barrier has fallen a little bit off the front, too, as they run basically nose to tail down the back straightaway. Ed Barrier has fallen a little bit back off of them, and Mark Thompson, who was right with Ed Barrier a minute ago, has fallen off. One car in trouble off turn four, sliding across in traffic. Here comes traffic scattering around, and a nice move to miss the car of Russell Landrum, the Stockbridge, Georgia driver, who is uh, making his second super speedway start in ARCA competition. The first came here Saturday night. He finds out turn four is pretty tricky at Charlotte. Yeah, he, he was really lucky. There were about three or four cars that were coming down that short chute, uh, and he was actually still sliding up the banking, and one guy just tried to go around the outside. Just missed him. Josh Baltis doesn't look like he hit anybody. He just got into the grass and spun. Avoiding uh, getting involved in the accident when Landrum's car was kind of sitting crossways across the speedway. And there you see Landrum getting it spun around and headed back in the right direction. But we do see the yellow flag for the fourth time in the race at lap number 44. Russell Landrum from Stockbridge, Georgia, 34-year-old driver, veteran of dirt racing for the past 10 years, getting a lesson in super speedway racing at Charlotte tonight, bringing out the yellow flag. Under caution for the fourth time in the Easy Care Certified 200 at Charlotte. Let's take a look at what brought out the yellow. Russell Landrum has spun off turn four. Yeah, he didn't hit anything, and nobody hit him, but you can see coming as he spins back up the racetrack right here. You'll see how close he got from uh, just right there. That's where Josh Balthy's actually got a little sideways and spun in the grass. And a nice move by several drivers, including yeah. Dan Partis in that 42 going high to miss Landrum. Ed Barrier gives up third position to make a stop under this caution. Let's go to pit road. Alan Barrier just in. They've just changed four tires. They said the only adjustment they'd make would be a slight air pressure adjustment. He said Barrier complained that the car was just a little bit tight. Patty Moise said moments ago Alexander was loose. Barrier's tight. Now what's amazing is these guys basically repaired the whole back half of the car today because Barrier wrecked in practice last evening here at the racetrack. So Barrier makes the first move to pit road. Blaze Alexander stopped on the racetrack in turn three. Let's go to Patty Moise. Blaze has got some problems in his car right now. The shifter is actually broke. They're trying to get in and make repairs on it, and he just didn't quite make it. The crew is running frantically down there to try to help. To Dick. Well, David Ift is crew chief for, da for Gary Layton, and right now he's talking to his drivers. Gary comes down the home straightaway. What are you telling him about coming in for pits? Uh, we're, they got a break at 67 laps. We're going to come in then, tighten it up just a tick, and put four tires and fuel and try to go the rest of the way. Is going to lap 67 risky with fuel at all? Now, we would have had to stop if we wouldn't have had all these cautions. We can only run about 58, 60, but we can make it now. And they're going to play follow the leader, I'm sure. Whatever these guys do, everybody else is going to do the same thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, what, what uh, he just said was definitely what I was just talking about, that if it was my, in my team, with the amount of yellows that we've had tonight, you don't need to pit right now. You, you can go to the halfway point, get your pit. You can only have to do two pit stops then for the rest of the race. Those feet hanging out of Blaze Alexander's car trying to fix that transmission problem. Back to Patty Moise. Yeah, they got a crew guy that was uh, all the way in the right side window trying to help him with the shifter. Uh, now they're going to make it. looks like a left side tire change or they're going under the car. They've got jack stands out now to go under the car to try to help him. Maybe stuck in a gear or, or between gears. Tough break for Blaze Alexander having a good run, racing in the top six until having a problem with the shifter. And he, it looks like, is going to lose a lap now as the field comes off turn four, gets ready to go back green. His crew working pretty frantically to try and get him back out. It's going to be very tight now as we come to the restart. Lap 49, Gary Layton leads the field away. 
They will bypass plays Alexander as he just gets up to speed off pit road now. And in fact, he stops at the end of pit road. So on the racetrack, here's the challenge for the lead off turn two. It looks like Jerry Nadeau going to try and take a shot at Gary Layton just for a second. Again, we're going to see the two different lines going in in the corner. And it looks like Jerry Nadeau is going to be able to make the move underneath him. They're coming off the floor and he's, I don't know, he's going to probably get him right through the dog leg here. He's definitely got the better line going into one. Dead heat at the start finish line. They do on the inside. On the outside would be the car of Gary Layton. Still side by side. And we saw this early in the race, racing side by side for the lead. It ended up pretty ugly when Matt Hutter slipped up the racetrack into Tim Steele, and they both ended up in the wall. This time it looks like Nadeau's going to get away with the lead cleanly off nice, four. Nice clean pass going into three. So for the second time in the race, Jerry Nadeau is back out in front. He gave up the lead at lap 34 to Gary Layton. Now at lap 50, he takes the top spot back now and pulls by about a car length or so in front of Layton as they work their way toward the halfway point of the race. Taking a look at the top 20 in the event, you see Nadeau and Layton. Mark Thompson, a very close third. Kirk Shelmerdine is up to seventh. Bobby Gerhardt has made his way all the way from 33rd starting position up to the 10th position. So a great run going for the Pennsylvania veteran in the early laps. Yeah, as you, like I, you can see, uh, Mark Thompson has definitely closed in on the front two cars that originally on the restart uh, broke away from everybody. Uh, looks almost like they come off for two a little better than Mark does, but he runs them down in three and four. By the way, Ed Barrier, who made the move to pit road from third position under that last caution, is on the racetrack in 12th position and trying to pick his way back toward the front and to the leaders. Haven't talked a whole lot about Mark Thompson. We got a glimpse of him there. The winner from Saturday night's race, running a very strong third and uh, very much in position to win, just like he was the other night. We didn't talk about him a whole lot till the end of the race there either. Well, he's he's running the same strategy he did Saturday. He's just kind of staying in the hunt. He's not he's not abusing the car, abusing the tires. Uh, I think that's a smart move right now. We're not even halfway through this race yet. As long as he keeps the leaders in sight, keeps the car underneath him, and doesn't abuse it come the last 30, 40 laps, that's when you can really push it. One car in the wall off turn number two, Kurt Piercy, also oh. Tim Bolton's machine and others getting involved now on the back straightaway, caution flag for the fifth time in the race. That is Tim Bolton's machine, you see, the 06, also involved the 14 of James Bolton. That's his car down on the inside after taking an impact to the front end of the machine. And the other machine that was uh, involved in the accident was the 10 of Kurt Piercy, it looks like he has been able to drive away from the accident scene. But caution for the fifth time in the Easy Care 200. Lap 53 brings the yellow flag again. There's Piercy's machine. Flat left rear tire, the back deck of the car all torn up. So Piercy, the 18th place driver in the Arca Series standings from Normal, Illinois, headed back to pit road. Let's see if we can uh, tell what happened here as uh, the field works its way through turns one and two. That's Piercy on the outside in the 10. And young Jeff Streeter Jeff. on the bottom in the 99. Looks like Jeff Streeter just got moved up a little, clipped him in the left rear, got him sideways, and here's where it breaks loose. Uh, Kurt Piercy moves up a lane, hits uh, James Bolton, who uh, actually you'll see come back across the racetrack and hit the inside retaining wall. There's Tim Bolton getting involved with Kurt Piercy, trying to find a way through on the inside. And the other Bolton, James Bolton, no relation, no by relation, the way, coming right. back down the racetrack and getting the inside wall. Here's another look uh, from inside of turn two. Oh, yeah, you can see Kurt Piercy when he got sideways and got bumped. Uh, just shot up the banking, hit the James Bolton here. Now, you'll see a car come right through this who, I'm not sure who it is, did a nice job of not getting involved in this wreck. Oh, that, that's, yeah, that, that was the 86 car of uh, Rich Woodland. Then you can see James Bolton come across and hit the inside of the retaining wall really hard. Tough break for James Bolton, kind of the innocent victim when Kurt Piercy got tapped and spun around. He was collected in turn number two, and the driver from Durham, North Carolina, involved in the fifth caution of the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Top the leaderboard is Jerry Nadeau. We'll be right back in just a minute. Continue under caution in the ARCA Easy Care Certified 200 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The caution brought out 
when the machine of Jeff Streeter tapped Kurt Piercy's over in turn number two, collected the machine of Tim Bolton and also James Bolton. And right now we're continuing on the back straightaway to remove the cars involved in that accident. So as we continue to work the field under caution, we're looking down right now at the entrance to Pitt Road. And I believe that's Kurt, Kurt Piercy's, Piercy's machine. Car. Yes, was one of the is. ones that was involved in that accident. Kurt's in the black there, standing by the driver's side of the car with some of the uh, medical workers there attending to him. Apparently uh, a little nicked up in that accident. We'll try and get an update uh, uh, on Kurt if we could. We saw him standing outside the car. That's a good sign. But apparently uh, not feeling completely up to par. Down to Pitt Road, Steve Burns has got an update on Blaze Alexander's problem. Steve? Alan, I had hoped to talk to Blaze, but I guess as you can see, he's a little busy right now. Plus, there are two guys inside the car, another six guys underneath the car. Obviously, they're working on the shifter, and it's bad news. Blaze Alexander had high hopes for his race here at Charlotte. He thought he had plenty of motor, lots of experience, but it's not going to happen tonight. Tough break for Blaze. We talked just a little while ago while he was running well that he sure could have used a good run here tonight. The season has not been what he and the team expected, but unfortunately, they are falling way behind by being behind the wall there. And uh, Blaze Alexander currently showing in 31st position, 11 laps down to the race leader. Going to take a few minutes for the cleanup to be completed from this caution flag. And while we are under the uh, yellow, take a minute to speak with Dr. Craig Rogers, who's the Dean of Engineering for the University of South Carolina, who is here in our booth with us. Good to see you here at Charlotte. understand you folks have got something pretty neat that you're going to start up down in South Carolina. Well, we had a wonderful day here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Thirteen universities uh, gathered today for the first organizational meeting of the National Collegiate Association for Racing. We are hoping that uh, with an exhibition race in October and a national championship series beginning in the spring of 1998, that we will launch a new intercollegiate sport. A new collegiate sport of racing. Well, it's about time. That's been a, a while in the making. What will that involve as far as students are concerned? What will they do? Will they do the driving? Absolutely. Uh, colleges of engineering throughout the country for, for more than three decades have been involved in motorsports. Uh, colleges of engineering have been designing uh, off-road vehicles, uh, formula race cars, solar cars, uh, and we have been, been racing those. But the one thing we have not done has been to race them head-to-head. -head. And so we believe now is the time to begin uh, to truly create an intercollegiate student athletic uh, event and race race uh, university to university on the race track. Should be a lot of fun. Dr. Rogers, appreciate you dropping by to tell us about it. Our pleasure. Thank Dr. You. Craig Rogers, Dean of Engineering, University of South Carolina on the Intercollegiate Racing Series. You're looking at the leader on pit road to Patty Moise. All right, the 01 pitted. They took right side tires. They also made a chassis adjustment. Now they've gone around to the left side. Looks like they might have took a little bit of bite out. He was a little bit tight when he was behind another car to their nose off the, there off the nose of the car and made it push just a little bit, and he's away. Well, now we've got to uh, look and see what their strategy is going to be at the mandatory pit stop in about about seven, or eight or eight or nine laps. They probably won't pit now. This is their, their window. They'll run this, uh, this yellow this caution period to be able to run the race through one more pit stop and they'll be done knowing that there's another caution coming they take advantage of stopping early get a little track position frank kimmel was in also we are under caution at lap 58 of 134 in the easy care 200 at charlotte we'll take a break as we rejoin you from charlotte the second place driver mark thompson just leaving pit road didn't think he was going to stop until the halfway break, Dick Bergeron. What happened? Well, what really happened is he thought perhaps he ran over some debris on the backstretch. And then when the 01 car came into pit, that was all they needed if they were thinking about it already. The decision was made. Mark came in, took four tires, they cleaned off the grill. An awful lot of junk on the grill for sure. And he's back out again. To Patty Moise. Well, Jerry Nadeau thought he was out of gas, and as it turned out, uh, that's why they pitted, and, and it did take two full cans, so, so that was a good decision on their part. So Nadeau back on the speedway and running in the 16th position. Mark Thompson back on the racetrack, and he should show up about uh, 18th in line on the lead lap, but they will be back in the field. Well, seeing that Jerry Nadeau ran out of fuel, that goes to show why these Winston Cup teams are doing the testing in Arkham finding out that SB2 Chevrolet motor must use a lot more fuel than uh, the regular conventional Chevrolet motor because there's no way that he should have normally had to come and stop for fuel. 
Cleanup just about complete from the accident scene that you see there, exiting turn number two, where the four cars uh, involved in the crash came to rest. Involved in the accident, Jeff Streeter and Kurt Piercy. Also, the machine of Tim Bolton and the car of James Bolton. The uh, rescue workers uh, working with James Bolton. He has gone to the infield care center. We'll try and get an update on him in just a moment. He was the one who took basically the heaviest shot. Familiar number different driver, different car. As a matter of fact, that's Jack Ely, the former modified driver from New England. The 80 number was the one that Dave Blaney had been in here last Saturday. Yeah, Dave, I guess, was uh, qualifying for today's race, and on his qualifying lap, got the car backwards into the wall and damaged the car pretty extensively. They had to go to a secondary plan, which was to put the number on Jack Ely's car. The uh, team that was here with Dave Blaney didn't have a backup car ready, basically, the Stan Holber team. So when they were involved in a crash getting ready for this race, they basically packed up and left. Ely was here just to run on his own. He needed tires. Stan Holber needed points. So Stan's tires and number went on the side of Jack Ely's car. And there's Ely in the race trying to make uh, what would be his first start of the season in the ARCA series. Mark Stahl on pit road. Mark uh, finishing fifth at Daytona for his best run of the season thus far. A veteran of NASCAR Winston Cup competition over the years. Now making his home here in the ARCA series. And Mark has had a quiet run, but still a very efficient run. Let's go down to pit road. Uh, Steve Burns is uh, alongside with an update. Yeah, Alan, we're in the Mike Swain Jr. pits. Mike Swain was just 20, but we're with Bill Davis, who owns Ward Burton's Winston Cup team. A lot of guys from your operation here. What, how are you guys helping? Well, we've got an SV2 motor, the new AAA motor and cylinder head in the car. It's an R&D deal as far as the engine goes, and Mike Swain Sr. spots for us on Sunday, and this is a way for us to help him out. Uh, Mike Swain Jr. is showing a lot of promise as a driver, and, uh, you know, give him a little shot here and see how he does. He's doing a great job. Okay, thanks, Bill. Also in the pits down here is Elton Sawyer, who is Patty Moise's husband, and Patty has instructed me to call Elton the most handsome man in racing. I don't even know how to come back from that. Field going to get the signal one to go, and we will go back racing now. Let's talk about the SB2 engine. You brought it up. There's Bill Davis down there with one in the field. That is a new generation engine that the General Motors teams hope to get into the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit soon. What's different about it? Uh, actually, everything is different about it. The cylinder head configuration uh, is totally different. The valve, the valve angles of it, the intake manifold is different. Actually, even the cylinder block because of the position of the lifter bores. And what's happened is Chevrolet's been, been lobbying to have this approved in Winston Cup, and they still haven't done it, so they're doing all their testing here in the Arca series. About a half a lap away from the restart. Is this really the most handsome man in motorsports? What do you think? Oh, I don't Should know. Should we get the 800 numbers going? <laughs> Start taking the votes, the 900 numbers going? He'd be terribly embarrassed if he knew what we were talking about. Well, what do you think, him. Steve? Yeah, let's ask him. Now, Elton, your wife, Patty Moise, working this broadcast, she has instructed me to refer to you as the most handsome man in racing. That's not embarrassing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> well, he does have what pretty blue eyes. that they referred to you? I think it was at Nashville back, uh, maybe you were getting kissed by one of those oh, singers. Was oh, that embarrassing? <laughs> See, Elton's trying to get me back. <laughs> Patty's probably embarrassed about all this, too, aren't you? I'll have hell to pay now. <laughs> when they get home later on tonight. Time for the restart now. Field coming down to the stripe. The green waving at lap 63. We will get a caution around lap 68 for halfway. Now it is Mike Swain Jr. chasing Gary Layton. Kirk Shelmerdine is up to third after the shuffle because of the pit stops over these last several caution laps. Good jump by Gary Layton on the restart. Remember, Layton has not yet come to Pit Road, so he's going to have to come in. Swaim has not visited Pit Road either, nor has Shelmerdine. Right now, they're at the front of the pack, slugging it out for the lead. Actually, the pretty good races for second. Let's tip the cap to Rick Eckert, New York, Pennsylvania driver in the orange car there, the double zero. He is running a very, very strong fourth place. Yeah, not bad for starting 15th. He's really used his head, and he's worked his way up to the front of the pack. Rick, a three-time champ at the Lincoln, Pennsylvania Speedway, and a four-time champ at the Bedford, Pennsylvania Speedway before coming to the Arca Circuit. Now Mike Swain Jr. under fire. Kirk Shelmerdine looking for the second spot. And Kirk looked inside to him, but it looked like Mike was able to hold him off going through three. Let's go to Patty Moise, who has an update on Kirk Piercy for us.
that is the update on Kurt Piercy. The normal Illinois driver was involved in this most recent caution, and we showed you his car stopped at the entrance to the garage area, and Kurt standing beside it with the medical people there, and that is the update on what happened with Kurt Piercy. So, uh, fortunately, it looks like he's going to be just fine, just getting attention to something that was uh, bothering him before the race and that he aggravated during the accident. This is the race for second that we're watching. Mike Swain Jr. has won the last two events for the NASCAR Goodies Dash Series, the four-cylinder compact machines. As one yeah. car is in the wall, off turn two, Jack Ely coming to rest. Actually, that's off turn four, coming to rest up against the inside wall and putting out the caution flag just shy of halfway. Well, Ely, it looks like, has taken some pretty good damage to both the front, well, front back and ends rear. of that yeah, car. He just waved, though, that let the safety crew uh, know that he's okay. The window net's down. You see that the roof flap uh, deployed like it's supposed to do, but uh, this this will be the uh, this is going to take play take place for the mandatory pit stop that we were talking about mandatory mandatory yellow. You don't have to pit on this. This should be a seven lap caution period right about now. Ely running in the 17th position on the lead lap at the time of his accident and putting us under caution for the sixth time in the race. 67 was halfway, so we actually have just creased the halfway point of this event. See if we can get a look uh, at what happened to Jack Ely as he came through turns three and four. This is the exit of turn four we're watching now. Ely is into the outside wall, coming back across the track. Yeah, you can see he had already got sideways and backed it into the wall and uh, just actually slid right across the traffic. Pretty lucky again. We've been pretty lucky with everyone sliding either up or down through traffic and not getting hit. So Jack Ely puts us under the caution flag as the uh, Midland North Carolina driver now, originally from up in Connecticut, running the modified circuit at Stafford Springs, Connecticut, Agawam, Massachusetts, Thompson, Connecticut, down uh, in North Carolina now. And uh, his uh, ARCA, first ARCA start of the season, not going uh, much to his liking at all, as his car very heavily damaged front and back end, though he is okay. Now, as we are at the halfway point, here come the leaders for those pit stops that we talked about. They were waiting till halfway four. Gary Layton, the leader, Mike Swain, Jr. You see there, Kirk Shelmerty, all the lead cars coming to pit road at lap number 68. Dick Bergeron's in the leader's pit. And Gary Layton is coming in. This is exactly the way they plan to do it. The only change, they were originally going to put scuff tires on. But you remember how we heard earlier from David if that the car was a little loose? Then as the tires wore on and as the night got cooler, it tightened up. So they're hoping that these sticker tires, the new tires, are going to loosen it up a little bit. Let's get down to Steve Burns. Hey, Dick Bergeron, Mike Swain Jr.'s pit crew is busting a tremendous pit stop with good reason. Most of them are Ward Burt's pit crew from the Winston Cup circuit. Damian Patton, the Jack Man, Ricky Byers, a tire changer, the gas man, Wayne Shaw. Boy, that was a lightning fast quick stop, and that shows you what experience will do down here on pit road. And the race off pit road will be easily won by Mike Swain Jr., who will come off for well ahead of Gary Layton and Kirk Shelmerty. Here's another look at the Jack Ely crash that brought out the caution. Watching way to the top of the screen, you see Ely's car all by itself. Nobody even close to the back of it. Yeah, just in the middle of three and four, actually, the car started to break loose. And he back, uh, spun it coming off the corner and backed it up into the wall. Tough break for Jack, and again, uh, good moves by a couple of drivers to duck down to his inside. In fact, one of them all the way to the apron of the racetrack to avoid getting into him. So on the exchange of pit stops, it will be the uh, car of Mike Swain Jr. who will win the race off pit road, but the leader will be Perry Tripp, staying on the racetrack just past halfway in the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte. Working the sixth caution of the Easy Care 200 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Arca Bondo Marhide Series. And pit stops under this caution flag, getting a little bit hairy for Rick Eckert, who was one of the front five at the time of the yellow. Yeah, you can see that was the right rear tire off of the Mike Cicchetti car. Rick, Eck Rick Eckert was trying to get out of his pits, hit it, and that thing is bouncing all the way down pit road. And several cars having to dodge that tire. Uh, Dill Whittemore's 56 car, you saw go to the inside of that. And the tire does make its way harmlessly to that jersey barrier you see it working its way to. But still, for Rick Eckert, bumping that tire with the front air dam of his car, what could that do? Uh, if it bent the front air dam, it, one of two things. If it got the grill, it could actually close some air off to the right air, which would cause it to overheat. Or if it, it bent the lower air dam, then he's going to have some handling problems. Now, Perry Tripp in that white number six car is the race leader. We talked about Perry earlier having to repair that car twice in the last five days after very hard crashes and uh, actually going back a week or so to the testing session he had here. But here's Perry Tripp in the lead. 
and hasn't been on pit road in a while, or has he? What kind of strategy is Trip playing to get the race lead? Patty Moise has an update. Well, Dick, they pitted early on. You know, they had to go to the rear of the field to make that start. So they pitted early on a couple of times to top off with fuel. That allowed them to go these extra laps. I imagine that they're going to be pitting within uh, just a few laps, maybe with one to go, before they go back green. Yeah, that's good strategy. I'd wait till the last lap on this yellow to come in and pit for my gas also. So Perry Tripp is the race leader with Ed Barrier, who stopped earlier behind him. Jerry Nadeau, Frank Kimmel, and Bob Strait, the top five. We continue under the caution at Charlotte, and we'll be right back. Just past the midway point of the ARCA Easy Care Certified 200 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, the race under the caution flag after Jack Ely crashed off of turn number four. And the race leaders behind the pace car would be Perry Tripp in that white number six. Then Ed Barrier in the black number 90, a Junie Donleavy car. He is in the uh, second position at this point. Jerry Nadeau in the white 01 is third. The rest of the top five, ARCA Series championship leader Frank Kimmel and veteran Bob Strait driving Jack Bauscher's machine. He holds down the fifth position, looking a little bit further back. Jimmy Kitchens in sixth, Mark Thompson in seventh, Rich Woodland Jr. having a good run at eighth. Ninth place would be Ken Martin and Mike Swain Jr., who just made a stop in 10. And just a minute ago, we talked about the fuel strategy for uh, the uh, leader, who is Perry Tripp. He's on pit road now in front of Patty Moise. Looks like a regular stop so far. They've gone around and they're changing right side tires and filling it with the first can of fuel. Looks like they might be having a little trouble on the right front. Yeah, they're a little bit slow there. Now they're around on the left side. crewman that I that I could recognize yeah it looks like there is one at the back of the car I'll check with him after this uh, pit stop and find out uh, what kind of problems they've had it has been a tough week for Perry Tripp but playing some strategy into uh, a decent run thus far out onto the racetrack. Just joining us, this the story of the event thus far. Early in the going, lap number nine. Matt Hutter in the one and Tim Steele in the 16, racing for the lead in turns three and four, and it got ugly. Yeah, as you can see, they were coming off the four, and Matt Hutter just did a, a carb wiggle just a little, had some air taken off his spoiler, tried to correct it, actually drove right into Tim Steele, and took both of them out. And then you can see right here, some cars trying to miss the wreck. Uh, got tangled up through the infield and it took out the, the Shane Doe's car and it hurt the Mark Gibson car who's back on pit road. And in fact being pushed backwards down pit road which is usually a sign he's headed to the garage. That front air dam missing on that machine we documented earlier. In fact we can see Mark's helmet's already off and hanging inside the car on a little hook the drivers have there to kind of hang the helmet on when they're taking it on and off during practice. So that's not a good sign either. And Mark Gibson will go behind the wall. He will be one of some 10 different cars out of the event in the first half of the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte. Some fuel strategy being played out now. Ed Barrier takes over the lead as we get ready for the restart. Back at Charlotte getting ready for the restart of the Easy Care 200 live on Fox. The Archibondo Marhide Series, the second of two visits to this mile and a half super speedway in just five days time. Perry Tripp back in again on pit road. He was the race leader just a moment ago. Back to Patty Moise. Yeah, they had a little bit of a problem on their first pit stop. Just a little bit slow on the right side. I'm not sure exactly what happened over there. But this second pit stop was merely to top off with fuel. Kind of a fuel strategy move. Hopefully that, that'll keep them from having to pit again. Good strategy, Bill? Uh, I don't think he's in the window. I think he's still going to have to pit one more time unless we get about eight or nine more laps of caution, then he'll be fine. So we'll have to follow out and see if uh, the fuel strategy of Perry Tripp is able to play out in a win. It'll be a big boost here tonight. Green flag now. Ed Barrier, the leader, getting a little boost down the main straightaway from Jerry Nadeau. Russell Landrum's the lap car on the inside, the 55. The leaders clear him to one. Frank Kimmel, the third place machine, that red 46 car also clearing the lap traffic. They put a huge distance back to the fourth place car. There you see now in that picture as we watch the front three try and get away and do a little bit of racing. Again, it's the first three cars take off on a breakaway, and it's never been the same three cars. It's kind of strange. It just seems like the minute they drop the green flag on the restart, three cars get in the breakaway. Here's they do to challenge for the lead on the inside at the start-finish line. 
Jones out in front, trying to run up the banking in front of Barrier. Jerry Nadeau will go back out in front. Now Barrier left to face a challenge from Frank Kimmel for the second spot. Kimmel been a solid top ten runner all evening, been a top five runner when some of the lead cars were shuffled out of the event in the early laps, and now he takes over the second position off of turn number four to the Arca Series championship leader in the second, chasing after that man, Jerry Nadeau in the bus fuse machine, the Pontiac that he is driving for Richard Jackson. This is the race for fourth. Mark Thompson, Saturday night's race winner, just ahead of Bob Strait, the veteran in Jack Bauscher's number 21, and Jimmy Kitchens in that white number 47, giving a good run tonight, too. He's right now showing six. Yeah, I'm glad to see that, that Bob Strait and Jack Bauscher team is really starting to gel. Uh, they ran good last week at, uh, two weeks ago at Salem. They ran decent Saturday. Now they're really starting to showcase here tonight. From uh, Mokita, Illinois, driving a car that Jack Bauscher has won somewhat five Arca Series championships, owning some when he drove, a couple his son Bobby drove, and now trying to get another one with the veteran Bob Strait here. Watching Perry Tripp's machine as it smokes, and he makes contact with Russell Landrum. Landrum spinning down into the infield grass as they work their way off of the corner and Landrum going to come to a wall the wall just barely nudging into it keeps the machine running I believe we're going to be able to stay under green as he tries to get it fired up and drive away Landrum sitting down on the inside of turn number two as we go back to the race for fifth position between Bob Strait and Jimmy Kitchens, we were about to show you, well, we did show you, Perry Tripp just smoking there slightly when he made contact with Russell Landrum's car. There you see that Bob Strait has had a good bit of success in the Arca Bondo Marhide series, visiting Victory Lane on 13 different times. By the way, Russell Landrum has driven away from where he came to rest in the grass in two. You see that smoke from Tripp's car. He just got uh, yeah. in a little bit too hard. hard. Hard to tell what that was that was smoking on Perry Tripp's car because it looked like it was coming out of the left front tire. I'm wondering if he actually got on the brakes a little too hard and smoked the tire. This would be the race for 10th position. Kirk Shelverdine in the three, oh. having to slow drastically. Wow, that was close. That was close. Landrum's car just having come up from the bottom of turn two where it was sitting a minute ago, and Shelmerdine was up inside of the car of Ken Martin in the 75, racing for a spot into the corner and had the jack on the brakes pretty good. Well, that was a smart move on Kirk. Uh, even though he gave a, a couple positions, he definitely kept the car in one piece and stopped you know, being involved in a big wreck. People would probably be surprised to know how far ahead you have to look driving one oh. of these cars at this racetrack as we watch Gary Layton taking another spot away. He has just moved around Bob Strait and taking the fifth position over and trying to get back to the front. You really have to look a long ways ahead here. Uh, you're, you're running 190 miles an hour down the straightaways. What is it? That's the length of a football field every uh, tenth of a second, something like that. You have to you have to look way ahead. And if you're not if you're too busy racing somebody side by side or a group just like these guys are, you come up on a slower car. And uh, if you're not paying attention, you have a big problem. Watching the race from eighth position on back, Rich Woodland in that yellow 86 has been running in the eighth position, but he's feeling some pretty serious heat as this group comes off of turn number four. All uh, trying to get that spot away from him. The car right in front of them, the 18 there, jo uh, Josh Baltus, he is not on the lead lap, so he's not in that race for position, but just about everybody behind him is. Woodland going to feel a challenge for that position from Martin in the 75. Going to look low off turn two. That's a backup car that Rich Woodland's driving right now. Uh, he was involved in that first lap wreck last Saturday and had to go to his backup car. The reason I know that is he's using my shop right now. They've got great duck sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Woodland's Farms out of California. Looking at the top five in the Easy Care Certified 200, just after halfway, Jerry Nadeau, the race leader, Frank Kimmel second, Ed Barrier third, Mark Thompson, winner of Saturday night's race here, fourth, and Gary Layton fifth. You are watching right now a pretty good race from the eighth and ninth positions on back. The Pontiac just leaving your screen is Mike Swain Jr. He's eighth. Ninth position is the 75 of Ken Martin. Holding down tenth is Rich Woodland in the yellow car, the 86. Right behind them in that blue 17 is Mike Cicchetti. Cicchetti's a former crewman on the Allen Kowicki team, also has been a Winston Cup crewman for Rick Mast over the years. He's going to go after the tenth position from Rich Woodland here. They were traffic in one. He's going to uh, pull uh, Kurt Schumann right along with him. 
Michel Merdin rallying back a couple of spots he lost when he had to jump on the brakes there a little while ago when he ran up on that lap traffic. And so Shaketti now having to deal with the lap traffic there as they work the back stretch. The orange car in the middle of that group, the double zero, that's Rick Eckert. Remember, he was running up in the top five a little while ago when he ran into a tire leaving Pitt Road after a series of stops. He's trying to make his way back towards the front. The North Pennsylvania driver and right behind Eckert as he gets loose in one and two. Uh, got, got a little down on the apron with the left side tires. You can see a car wiggle. I've noticed now for the last two laps, every time Kirk Shelmerding goes into one and two, he gets smoke out of the left front. I don't know if his tires are rubbing against the fender or not. Working now off of turn number four. This group of cars from Rick Eckert and the Orange Machine on back, now racing back for the 12th position as they come down to the start finish line. Complete lap 88 of 134 that make up the distance. Right behind Eckert in the Orange car, the 56 there, that's Bill Whittemore, the president of the Indiana Steel Company who is a veteran of short track racing in and around the Indiana area. Uh, memory serves me correct, the former track champion at the Farmer City uh, Raceway in Illinois, among other things. And, uh, excuse me, at Twin City, Illinois Speedway. 87, 88, and 89, the track champion there. The co-rookie of the year in the Arca Circuit in 1995. And out here tonight, right now, running in the uh, 13th position. Well, I remember Dill's first involvement with Arca was when he was sponsored Frank Kittle. We are back on the leader, Jerry Nadeau now, who has a 3.1 second lead on Frank Kimmel. Opened up a pretty good advantage for himself. Let's go to his pit and Patty Ruiz. Yeah, I'm down here talking with Richard Jackson, car owner of not only Jerry Nadeau's uh, car here in the ARCA race, but also Morgan Shepard and Winston Cup. Do you all have any uh, special R&D stuff on uh, Jerry's car out here tonight? Yeah, we don't have anything R&D on the car or the engine, but we're R&D and the driver. We're testing him out. It's someone we want to bring up and as a future Winston Cup driver. Well, it looks very promising here tonight. Caution flag Caution is flag waving out. for the seventh time in the Easy Care 200. There you see the reason why. A piece off of one of the machines sitting up in the 24-degree banking of turn three at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Going to slow the race just again for that debris on the racetrack in turn three. Looking at Mark Thompson's car right now, he was the winner here on Saturday night, currently running in fourth position, and note that hood and that special logo on the hood. Dick Bergeron is in Mark Thompson's pits to explain why. Yeah, we don't have a thing to worry about tonight. We've got a general here from the Air Force, Bob Stevens, who's looking on at the race, enjoying it enormously. This is the 50th anniversary of the United States Air Force, and they are here celebrating that occasion as well they should. Uh, I understand, by the way, Sunday there's going to be quite the show here by the Air Force. Unfortunately, they say they're going to try to rescue Lugnut from the middle of some foreign invasion. We've been trying to persuade them, let Lugnut go. I don't know if we're going to be successful at that. <laughs> we need to explain what Lugnut is. <laughs> well, Lugnut is the uh, Legends uh, Series mascot that's here at the Speedway. And uh, my shop is only about a mile and a half from Charlotte Motor Speedway. And we've been watching all the, the, the testing and the uh, what the Air Force is going to do this weekend here uh, at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And it's definitely going to be a spectacle for everyone to see. Race leaders are on pit road. Jerry Nadeau's stop, covered by Patty Moise. They've gone around and they've changed the right side tires. They're now around on the left side tires. I did not see any chassis adjustment. If they made one, it was simply the tire pressure. Looks like a routine stop so far. Down to Dick. Mark Thompson is also in for a four-tire change for the full tank of gas. This could well be the last stop that any of these guys are going to need to take. Thompson with a good stop. And let's go down to Steve Burns. Dick Ed Barrier's in the 90 car, and they took what seemed like eternity on the right side of the car. This is really going to slow him down. He'll lose a bunch of track position. Fortunately, the left side goes on okay, but again, very slow on the right side. Yeah, this was definitely smart strategy on part on, of all of the teams right now. Uh, we're going to go green this time by. This is definitely the, I don't know, we may still have the yellow come back out. We do see some more debris on the racetrack. It's on the back straightaway right now, but uh, perfect timing for this. Come in, there, we're, we're in the window now. We don't have to worry about running out of fuel. If you pit now, you can go green and can go all the way to the end of the race. Pace car is off pit road. Perry Tripp takes back over the lead. Gary Layton also stays on the racetrack. He takes second. Jimmy Kitchens, Mike Swain Jr., Ken Martin, Mike Cicchetti all 
stay on the racetrack. And a big break for some of these drivers making their stop late in this caution flag because they hadn't even caught up to the pack yet when we've gone back green flag racing. Show you that in a minute. First, here's a challenge for the lead right away off turn two. Yeah, I'm not, you know, the, everyone kind of played around in the pits. They didn't get out fast enough, and the, and the leaders that pitted it towards the end are more than a half a straightaway behind the front cars. See the sparks fly between Tripp and Gary Layton off turn number four as they come down to the start-finish line and complete lap number 95. Let's update you just for a second. Perry Tripp may be on the tail end of the lead lap here. He may, he is, in fact, he is. It's just as we say that, we get confirmation. He's on the tail end of the lead lap, so it is Gary Layton that's leading in the 74, and Tripp trying to stay in front of him, see if he can't get a lap back at some point soon. It's Ken Martin in the 75, racing for fourth position with Mike Cicchetti in the 17. Yeah, Mike Cicchetti driving the, uh, the Hughes uh, Supply-sponsored uh, Chevrolet. He's originally from Chicago. Work their way across the start-finish line. Those two drivers do. We look up front. This is Bob Strait going by Blaze Alexander, who is several laps down after spending time on pit road with transmission troubles earlier in the race. So Bob Strait now back up to the eighth position on the racetrack and looking for some more ground, see if he can't close a little bit farther up front. Just behind them would be the uh, Rich Woodland car, the yellow number 86, and Mark Thompson in the black number 66 going to the outside, and we have caution at the start-finish line as the field comes down to the stripe. We see one car up in smoke heading for Pitt Road off turn four. That looks like young Josh Baltus. His night may be coming to an end in a uh, rather unceremonious fashion, and also Bill Whittemore's car stopped right there stopped at the at entrance, the entrance to Pitt, Pitt Road. Road. yeah. Tough break for Bill Whittemore. Brings out the caution for the eighth time in the Easy Care 200. Lap 96 of 134 complete. We'll be right back. Been a rash of yellow fever in the ARCA Easy Care 200. Not for a lot of reasons other than the last couple times. Debris and cars stopped on the racetrack. We've also had a couple of accidents, but at this point, the yellow waving for the eighth time in the race. Maybe that full moon we showed you earlier causing that rash of yellow fever. You're looking at the leader. Let's go to Dick Bergman on pit road. Yeah, Gary Layton may well not pit again. Uh, David Ift, his crew chief, has been looking over his notes and kind of counting up caution flags. All the C's he's got on his pit board suggest they can make it all the way on just one single pit stop. That's the plan. They're going to try to get that done. We'll see if it works. While we were looking at Gary Layton's car, Bill Venturini noticed something laying across the grill. Yeah, it looked like there's some uh, trash, some paper that they just picked up from on the racetrack. Uh, it won't affect him if you look at the front grill when he comes by again. There's a, an upper and a lower section. If the lower section is untaped and it's not closed off, he'll have no problem. If they've got tape on that bottom section, which like it looks got like they got a yeah. tape, yeah. Uh, that it does, paper doesn't look like it's a lot, but if that whole bottom section is taped, that may cause a problem later on. So we'll have to keep an eye and see if the water temperature uh, hangs in there on the leader's car. There you see some a lot of rubber and uh, maybe a little bit of paper plastered along that bottom section of the grill above the tape as we get a nice look at that coming down the back stretch. And then uh, the hot dog wrapper yeah. or uh, whatever it is uh, across the grill. And That'll these cars don't have a whole lot of opening there on the front to get air to these engines. No, you try to keep it as small as you can because the, the more opening you put, the less speed you have. That paper should blow off when it gets back up the pool. Coming back to the restart now. Restart to come at lap number 99. There'll be 35 laps to go in the race. Pace car heads for pit road. It is Gary Layton, Jimmy Kitchens, and Mike Swain Jr. The top five as Doyle Ford looks him over. It's the green flag in the air. We're back racing at Charlotte again. This was a big break for Mark Thompson and the guys that pitted on the last yellow that never got caught up to the field before they went green. So now that they think this yellow came out, the field is all bunched up. They're back up in the lead group. They're not quite up in the lead group. They're in, I should say they're in the middle of the pack, but they're not a half a straightaway behind the leaders now. Trying to work their way around some of the lap traffic down to the inside line as they come off turn number two. We look back there and we do find Ed Barrier in that 90. Jerry Nadeau in the 01 working their way up through some of the cars that did not stop for fuel on this last caution or tires for that matter. The tires these cars run on, how much of an advantage is that to Nadeau and Barrier and Thompson that just took on fresh tires over the guys that have maybe 20 laps more on them? Well, and right now, I don't think that there's a much advantage to the tire situation, but as we get another 20 laps into it, a, a car with 40-lap tires versus 20-lap tires, the 20-lap tires will definitely will be better. 
Little decision to make for Jerry Nadeau. He chooses the three-wide route. Wow. Down to the inside of that yellow car, that's Steve Clark, the lap machine, and had uh, a challenge for fourth. He was trying to get fourth away from Ken Martin, the red and white car there on his outside. He will get that spot away at the start-finish line, but a real quick decision had to be made there going into three, and looked like they knew chose the right course. Car in trouble in the wall in turn four. It is Randy Roush, the Cocoa Beach, Florida driver, who has caught the wall. He is down off the banking now as the field works its way down the back straightaway toward where he sits in the middle of turns three and four, and we're going to see the yellow flag again as the field comes to the start-finish line. Terry Tripp going to try and scoot by the race leader if he can at the stripe to make up a lap. It will not work as Gary Layton just manages to hold him off, but the caution waving for the ninth time in the race when Randy Roush crashed in turn four. Yeah, you can see coming up, coming off of turn four, he just got down, I think he just got down a little too low. Again, almost the same situation at the beginning of the race where a faster car went around on the outside of him, took the air off the spoiler, and the car just spun around. The uh, car got loose and spun around and hit the wall. So Randy Roush from Cocoa Beach, Florida, does his normal racing on the short tracks of Central Florida. New Smyrna Beach in the Orlando Speed World finds Super Speedway racing a bit rough here in Charlotte tonight. He is in the wall in turn four, brings out the caution flag for the ninth time in the Easy Care 200 for the ARCA Series at Charlotte. We're closing in on the finish. Don't go away. Our aerial views of the Charlotte Motor Speedway tonight provided by the Brute Blimp. Which is definitely the best smelling blimp in the air. Brute Blimp giving us some magnificent shots on a gorgeous evening in North Carolina. Fans here watching the Arca Bond Omar Hyde Series go at it in their second race on this mile and a half super speedway in five days, the Easy Care 200. Story of the race, well, the two front runners in the early going taken out in an accident. Matt Hutter and Tim Steele racing side by side for the lead at lap number 10. When Hutter slipped up the racetrack and bounced off steel, and they both bounced off the wall and out of contention. Since then, through a series of yellows, it's been a pit strategy race. The drivers picking different pit schedules, some making two pit stops for tires and fuel, some stretching because of numerous caution laps to a one-stop race. The one-stoppers are at the head of the pack at the moment. Question is, will their tires, being a little bit older than the others, and really their fuel hold out to the finish over the other guys that are trying to make their way through the pack. Well, this may make that crafty crew chief David Ift uh, look like a genius again. Uh, he's, I think he's making the call to let Gary Layton run uh, the race with that one, one pit stop. This caution played right into his, his strategy. They and now are within the window. He's not, he shouldn't run out of fuel now. We've only got, what is it, 30 more laps to go uh, before the end of the race, and he should be able to make it without another pit stop. Looking at Mike Swain Jr., who is one of those trying to make it a one-stop race. Patty Moise is in his pits to check on the strategy. Actually, I was just talking to Barry Owens, who's uh, crew chief in for him here at this race, and asking him how it was going for him. He says they can make it the rest of the, the race. They won't have to pit again. He says he's a little bit loose in traffic, and he would really like to be able to have the car spread out just a little bit so that uh, he can run his own pace. To you, Dick. Now, David Ift just grabbed me by the arm and said, hey, now we've got about 20 laps to go. I'm going to cut him loose and let him run. I said, David, he's been running his heart out all year. And David just roared his head back and laughed, and he said, this is so much fun. This is the way Winston Cup used to be. Isn't this great? And they are having a fun time down here on Pit Road, and so are the fans that are watching this event tonight. As we continue under the caution at Charlotte Motor Speedway, looking out over the backstretch of the racetrack, see those three searchlights in the air? Somehow, and I hadn't figured out how or asked for an explanation yet, those are connected to the caution lights at the racetrack. When we're under caution, the lights are moving like that. When we go back under green, they come to a halt and they stand still. That's pretty incredible the extent they'll go to to put on a show for the fans here at Charlotte. Take a look at a summary of the Easy Care certified to 200 thus far. Five leaders, eight lead changes nine cautions and really the story of the event if the guys making one stop like Gary Layton and Mike Swain Jr. whose crews we talked to a minute ago turn out to end up winning will be those 50 caution laps we saw a minute ago. Jimmy Kitchens in that 47 car running in second. Patty Moise has an update on his try to go the distance on one stop. Well they're holding out. They're hoping for at least four more laps of caution and then they feel like they can make it the rest of the way without another stop. So they got their fingers crossed for a little bit more caution laps. Kitchens, the 35-year-old uh, driver from Hueytown, Alabama. This car, that 47 machine, one that was in the Bobby Allison NASCAR Winston Cup team stable last year, now being driven by Kitchens here in Charlotte tonight. 
Time for the restart, lap 105 of 135, as the green waves and Gary Layton gets another great jump. Yeah, you can tell on the restarts, uh, that's a tribute to the engine, uh, which I guess that's a Morgan McClure car and engine that they uh, purchased complete from the team. And you can definitely see when they drop the green that uh, he's definitely got a good motor to pull the car. Rod is not doing a bad job no. coming up through the gears either. Ferocious race back for about the sixth position on back. Mike Cicchetti in that blue number 17 shuffling a little bit wide in the corner. But if you have some heat from Mark Thompson down low, you've got Kimmel there. You've got uh, Straight there, Shelmerdine, Eckert, Woodland, all knotted up in that pack of traffic. Again, racing from about fifth, sixth position on back. Ed Barrier in 90 also in that group. These are some of the guys that made a second stop. Cautions have helped them catch back up to the field. Now they're kind of running out of laps, and if they're going to get up there and challenge for the win, they need to get going in a big hurry. Well, Ed Barry is trying to make it three wide, going into three. Mark Stahl in the 32, also making a couple of stops during this race. Stahl running right now in and among that group, although he is not on the same lap with them. Thompson, Barrier in the 90, the next car, then straight in the 21, and anchored in the orange double zero, all race for the seventh position. Man on the move toward the front of the field is Jerry Nadeau, who's about to take over the second spot as the field works its way around here. So Nadeau tried to rally back. He and the Mike Swain Jr. in the five got together in the middle of three and four that time as they came off the corner. And Swain did a great job to keep the car out of the wall. The machine went way up the racetrack on him. Drops back to a distant third. But if I were Gary Layton looking in the rearview mirror, I might be concerned now that Jerry Nadeau has gotten around and has worked his way back up to second. Yeah, uh, Kevin Martin, uh, or is it Ken Martin in the 75 car, doing an excellent job. Uh, he's in, running fifth right now, uh, being able to run up front with the leaders. That's a tribute to uh, Bob Shack, who's the crew chief on that car right now. Watching Martin begin to fall into the clutches of the current series point leader, Frank Kimmel, in that 46. As he, Martin, tries to deal with Perry Tripp. Tripp right now running the first car one lap down in 15th spot. And the two cars are 75 and 46, both Martin and Kimmel racing for fifth and sixth spots down the back stretch. Kimmel looks pretty good here. Yeah, K Kimmel's definitely getting through the corners better than probably anyone I've seen so far tonight. Now Thompson going to try and find his way around. Ken Martin. That's the second time Perry Tripp has gone through three and four and actually almost hit the wall coming off a of four, which uh, has slowed him down and the people behind him, everyone kind of checks up because they're not sure what's going to happen. Mark Thompson running in seventh position right now. The winner here Saturday night, his first ARCA Series win in many, many races of trying as he tries to deal with the lap car of Terry Tripp and see if he can get up into the top five and challenge for position. He'll try to get Tripp ball off four. Ed Barrier there in the 90. Just the fact that he's in this kind of position late in the race. Eighth is a pretty good tribute to his crew after a practice crash last night in their final hour. In the final hour, I walked into the garage area this morning and uh, they were placing the back end of the car. They do after getting around. Mike Swain Jr. for second spot hasn't wasted any time running down Gary Layton for the race lead. He's drawn within a couple of car lengths of him and he is on the charge. Now the race with third position, Frank Kimmel on the move around Jimmy Good. Kitchens for that spot on the back stretch. And you can see Mike Swain looks like he's looking on the inside too on Kitchens going down the back straightaway. Frank Kimmel has really come on strong toward the end. Watching the race off of turn number four for the third position as Mike Cicchetti goes for a wild ride across the trioval grass down the main straightaway. Brings out the caution flag for the tenth time in the race. I mean, Cicchetti went across the grass at about 160 miles an hour. The car didn't go around on him. He just broad slid all the way across the grass. Came to rest without hitting anything significantly way down in turn one. And that's a bad break for Mike. He was having himself a solid run in the top 15. See if we can get a look at what happened. Watch this wild ride he took across the grass. Catching the end of it here as he comes off the trioval grass and tries to gather it up before getting the inside Ooh. wall too heavily. Oh, it looks like he might have just touched the corner of the wall, but uh, very lucky he didn't hit anything. I don't think he really hit it. 
nonetheless, the uh, pulse rate probably <laughs> significantly higher on Mike Cicchetti after a pretty wild ride off turn number yeah. four down across the trial of the gas. That's uh, the grass. That's uh, not a good place to get turned around. I'm wondering if something broke on the car because he's put the window net down, which is the sign that you're going to get out of the car and you're okay. If he would have just spun, he probably would have started the car back up and drove it around. He must have broke something which caused him to slide through the grass. Let's talk strategy here. Now the caution going to come out and bunch the field up again. So you've got Frank Kimmel, Jimmy Kitchens, Mike Swain Jr., who've all been trying to catch up. This a big, big break for them. We'll find out when we come back. Getting ready for the finish of the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte. 20 laps to go. Gary Layton and Jerry Nadeau, the top two with company now. Back at Charlotte, you're looking at Mike Cicchetti, who brought out the 10th caution of the Easy Care 200 with a wild spin down through the trioval grass on pit road getting service now. Let's go to Steve Burns. Alan, I just talked to the crew prior to his pit stop, and they said his problems were actually motor-related, that he dropped the cylinder, and I don't know exactly what that caused him to lose control, but that was what started his problem. So Cicchetti able to get the car fired up from where it came to rest down in turn one and back around. He has to come to pit road for some attention from his crew. Unfortunately for Mike, he's dropped to 19th position and lost three laps while he was sitting there waiting to get the car back going again and coming back around for his service. Started to talk a little bit before the break, Bill, about this caution flag coming out now. The lead couple of cars had a pretty healthy advantage on third, fourth, fifth on back. The lead couple being Gary Layton and Jerry Nadu. How much has this caution getting Frank Kimmel and Mike Swain Jr. and Jimmy Kitchens and Mark Thompson particularly, who is a good three quarters of a straightaway back, how much has this caution put them back into contention to win? Well, th this is it. You know, the cards, all the cards are on the table. You got about 16 laps to go. There's no, there's no holding back now. You've got to, you've got to put the hammer down, drive what you can, get, you know, get, get what you can out of the car. Let's see who's got it. I mean, uh, good break for Kimmel and uh, Mark Thompson to catch up with the group along with Swain because the first two cars were running away with it. Now we're going to see who's got it all. Looking back through the field as we get ready for a restart, we will get the green at lap number 118. The checkered will come at lap 134. So we're down to it here at Charlotte. Gary Layton in the orange car, Jerry Nadeau in the white car, along with the rest of those on the lead lap on the outside lane. Go for the break now at the green flag, and one of the keys for some of those drivers back in sixth and seventh is going to be how quickly they clear the lap traffic here. Yeah, who can get in, uh, get in clear traffic, get into one, get the car back down on the line you want, not run side by side. Watching Mark Thompson there go for a position off of turn number two, down to the inside of Mike Swain Jr. This the race for the fifth position. Back behind them, Ken Martin in the 75 in seventh. Feeling heat, and now up front, challenge for the lead off turn number four. Jerry Nadeau looked like he had a good run off the bottom of the corner, but boy, there's some horsepower out of that Morgan McClure engine on Gary Layton's car, and he just drew away down the straightaway. Yeah, you can, like I said, you can see through the corners. Through one and two, they're both almost taking the same line. Looks like Nadeau can run just a little bit lower, uh, where when they get through three and four, it almost looks like Gary Layton has a little push. Watching the race for third and fourth now with Jimmy Kitchens in that white number 75 running in fourth position at this point. He's got Mike Swain Jr. in the five right behind him. As they come off the corner down to the strike with 14 laps to go. There's Ed Barrier in the 90. The car rebuilt after a happy hour practice crash here last night. Looking up ahead now from that race for the uh, fourth, uh, make that the fifth position, up to the distance to first and second. There's the orange car, Gary Layton, the Tampico machine with the white machine of Jerry Nadeau behind him. And they are running in a Chevrolet and a Pontiac, first and second now, about a car length apart in the closing lap. And as you can see from that uh, aerial shot uh, up above that Frank Kimmel has actually closed the gap on what the first two cars are taken on the beginning of the uh, restart. A look at the rundown as we continue to follow the race for the lead into the closing laps of the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte. Layton's car sliding a little bit wider in the middle of the corner than Nadeau's. Nadeau's going to look low again off the turn, but still not quite and enough. Then, not quite enough. It looks like uh, Gary Layton has a little more power coming off the corner. He's not binding the motor. Up. He's letting it run a little freer coming off the corner. Race for six. Ed Barrier trying to get that spot away from Jimmy Kitchens in turn one. 
He will slide up in front of him halfway through the corner and take over the spot as they exit two. So Ed Barrier tried to rally back toward the front, and we move back to the leaders now, working their way around lap traffic. That 92 car is the machine of Tim Moser, who was involved in a crash back at lap three, still soldiering on. The leaders cross the start finish line, completing lap number 123. 11 laps to go. That's the leader's wife, Christy. You think she's a little bit nervous at this point? Let's go to the leader's kid, Nick Berger. Well, Gary Layton is kind of the local hometown hero. He lives in nearby Albemarle, North Carolina, and really cut his teeth in big league stock car racing in the old Super Speedway Sportsman Series they had here. In fact, he won, the very, won one of the very last races that division ever had at Charlotte Motor Speedway back in the fall of 95. Should he win tonight, it would be by far the biggest win of Gary Layton's career. Gary spent the 1996 season running the uh, late model stock car series at Concord Motor Speedway, just up the road from Charlotte here. Scored some dozen wins in that class at that racetrack last year, one of the NASCAR Winston Racing Series speedways. His family now owns part of the racetrack, right. which is why he's not competing there anymore. Right. Between him and his brother and his father, they're the owners of Concord Motor Speedway now. And that's, like you said, that's why he's not racing there anymore. He probably was a conflict of interest. Working his way around Dan Partis with nine laps to go. They do really starting to put the pressure on now. Be interesting to see if Layton's experience or lack of experience in one of these high-powered Arca Series machines comes into play in the final laps. We've already documented earlier, Nadeau's got a lot of experience in these type cars. He's looking for the lead off of two. They, oh, excuse me, that's off of four as they come to the stripe. Into the grass, Nadeau is. Dirt kicking up from the car. Pretty serious wiggle. He's able to keep it under control and just soldier right on after the lead. Yeah, neither one of them skipped a beat. So. <laughs> wow. Great stuff. Settling the Easy Care 200 here at Charlotte. Gary Layton, local driver, making only his second start in the ARCA Series. And Jerry Nadeau, who hopes to find a full-time ride in the NASCAR Bush Series next season, driving the machine out of the Richard Jackson NASCAR Winston Cup team. Trying to find a way around him. We're down now to the final handful of laps. David If, the veteran crew chief, trying to help Gary Layton to the victory, coaching his driver on as he gets all kinds of pressure from they do as they work their way through the final laps. Well, we'll see when they go into three and four. You can see uh, uh, Jerry Nadeau has been able to actually get into the corner a lot lower, and sure enough, he is. That's where he seems to make his, his uh, biggest ground, uh, picking up biggest ground on uh, Gary, but Gary comes off of four with a lot, seems like a lot more motors able to come on the first two. Layton driving a machine purchased from the Morgan Latour team that puts the Kodak Chevrolets on the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit from Sterling Marlin and running an engine leased from that team. About five and a half laps away from what would be a huge win for him if he can hang on. Let's go down to pit road. Patty Moise has an update on Jerry Nadeau. One of the problems he may be having, Dick, when he gets behind, he's, he's picked up a little push. You know, the air is, is not really giving good downforce on the nose of the car. Now, they made a chassis adjustment for it. What they ended up doing was they raised the track bar just a little bit, but he's maybe still having that problem when he pulls up. It's just hard for him to get around. Aerodynamics. We talked about that a bit earlier when Mark Gibson was missing the uh, nose air dam from his car and maybe playing a factor in Jerry Nadeau trying to get around Gary Layton in these final laps. Be four laps to go when the leaders come off turn four down to the start finish line. Working their way through lap traffic. You look a little bit farther back in the field. See Saturday night's winner Mark Thompson in fourth now. There he is trying to get third position away from Frank Kimmel in the closing laps. They work their way in some lap traffic as well. Yeah, right now it seems like the lap traffic is uh, playing a, a big part on if these guys can make a pass on each other. The interval between the front two and that race for third and fourth position in the closing laps here at Charlotte. Just a couple of car lengths between the front two, but again, a few laps ago, Nadeau was right up on Layton's back bumper. This is the biggest the distance has been between the front two, probably since the last restart. Well, like Patty had, had mentioned, it, probably the car's getting a little too tight. Jerry Nadeau's crew looking on, hoping their driver can find a way, maybe hoping Gary Layton will slip, and he does off turn right two. There. Here goes Nadeau after him on the outside. Smoke between them as they bounce together just a little bit into turn three. See the big black donut mark in the right front on Layton's car as they work their way off of turn number four. Lots of lap traffic ahead. 
And now two laps to go. The way it looks to it, though, with Jerry Nadeau is that he feels that he can't get a run on him if he just stays right up on him. So what he's doing, he's laying back just a little, trying to get a full run and make the pass all at one time. Lap and a half for Gary Layton to try and score a win here at Charlotte, his home track. A huge victory for him. Same for Jerry Nadeau, hoping to find a NASCAR Bush Series ride for next season. Both acquitting themselves very well here tonight as they come down to the start-finish line. White flag, final lap for Gary Layton. They do had a lot of trouble getting around a lap car in three and four. Ran him up a little bit high on the racetrack. That may have just done the trick for Layton if he could keep him slipping in the final lap. Yeah, all Gary Layton's got to do now is run a nice clean line through three and four, and there's no way Jerry Nadeau is going to be able to catch him. Final corners for Gary Layton. Some lap cars ahead of him on the inside. Going to make him work for every inch of this win. Here he comes off the corner. Checkered flag is in sight. And the winner of the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte is Gary Layton, 34 years old, from Albemarle, North Carolina. Drives a Morgan McClure machine, his team purchased from the Kodak crew with a Morgan McClure engine, crew chief by the veteran David If. And Gary Layton goes to victory lane in the Easy Care 200. Thrilling last 15, 20 lap duel with Jerry Nadeau. And congratulations to both drivers on a wonderful race. Oh, definitely. Good race. Nice, clean race between those two cars. Uh, showed that they can run with each other. Definitely had some uh, horsepower between them both, too. There you see Gary Layton, the winner of the Easy Care 200 at Charlotte and the rest of the top five. Dr. Dick Bergren, Steve Burns, and Patty Louise covered the pit road for us tonight. For Bill Venturini, Alan Bestwick, so long from Charlotte. Victory Lane tonight for Gary Layton.